Welcome to episode 4 of the Whiskey Jug. I'm your host Schwa, and today we're talking about Canadian whiskey. Now, when compared to their American counterparts, Canadian whiskey is usually a little bit lighter, a little bit smoother, and that's partially due to its use of the malted rye, which also, when we talk about some of the older stuff, gives it a fantastic smell. When you smell some of the older whiskeys, like Black Velvet 8 Year Reserve, or even a Canadian Club 10, they have a very delicious caramel smell to them, very powerful. It also got a bit of spice on the back end, and just kind of an undertone of the whiskey smell, and very delicious. I would love a candle of this. I would absolutely burn a Black Velvet 8 whiskey candle in my house. It would smell fantastic all the time. Caramel, spice, wonderfulness. Um, another thing to note about Canadian whiskey is when you look at the label, you're going to be a little bit deceiving, and that's because under Canadian law, the terms Canadian whiskey, Canadian rye whiskey, and rye whiskey, they all mean the same thing, completely ubiquitous. There's no legal definite difference between them, and they're not, it's not going to tell you that one has more rye than the other. Um, Unlike American whiskeys, where the mash has to be at least 51% to be called a rye whiskey, no such thing in this case. But what Canadians are very particular about is the age of their whiskey and the type of barrels it's uh, aged in. By Canadian law, uh, Canadian whiskey has to be aged for a minimum of three years in small wooden barrels no larger than 700 liters, and which still not small small but they do have that size requirement and that age requirement also carries on to imports an American company can't send up a whiskey or anywhere else can't send a rye whiskey up to Canada and call it a rye whiskey if it's only been aged for two years which is the minimum in America and otherwise they'll send it back because it cannot be labeled as a rye whiskey unless it meets that age requirement uh, a couple other legal things to note about Canadian whiskey is that obviously it must be produced in Canada. It has to be distilled from a fermented mash of cereal grains. And the finished product has to possess the aroma, taste, and general characteristics um, that are generally attributed to Canadian whiskey. That's something they take very, very seriously. Um, now, Canadian whiskey has been around for quite a while, but what got it really popular was Prohibition. An American grocer named Hiram Walker opened up a distillery in Ontario, Canada. It was located right across the Detroit River from the city of Detroit, Michigan. And during the Prohibition, rum runners and bootleggers used very fast boats to get across the river, load up on the Canadian hooch, and then bring it down and distribute it into American speakeasies, private clubs, and hidden bars all around. After those incredibly dark days of Prohibition passed, um, Americans really had a taste for Canadian whiskey, made it incredibly popular. And American whiskey makers then decided to petition their politicians to pass a law stating that whiskey has to state, and which then came into other spirits, um, but whiskey has to be labeled its country of origin. So Hiram Walker's Club Whiskey then became Canadian Club, which is still one of the most popular Canadian whiskeys today but one of the, probably the most popular one you've seen a lot probably had is uh, Crown Royal. Now Crown Royal to me um, doesn't really taste much of a rye whiskey. It's really, really sweet to me. I, I don't like it straight. I got friends that really like it straight, but I'm not a sweets guy. I don't even generally have sweets in my house. It's not my thing. So I usually like to use it more for mixes. Um, some of the stuff you've probably also come across Canadian Mist. Personally, again, not a huge fan of drinking it straight, but fantastic with lemonade. It is phenomenal. Canadian whiskey with its spice mixed with lemonade, mwah, delicious. Um, my favorite Canadian whiskey, and one that if you're just starting to get into Canadian whiskey and you really want to try something that is a very delicious representation of uh, our neighbors from the Great White North, Pendleton's. Fantastic. Canadian whiskey. So make sure to give that a try. Um, some of your aged ones like the Black Velvet 8 or the Canadian Club 10 or even 
the Seagram, some of the aged Seagrams. I believe this one is the Seagrams 10, no, Seagrams 8, sorry. Um, they have that very caramel, spicy taste to them. Pretty good on the rocks. Um, so give them a try. Definitely don't pass up the Pendleton if you have a chance. It's by far my favorite of the Canadian whiskeys. Well worth a try. Um, now, before I let you go, just so you know, that rye whiskey isn't the only thing. It, it is the bulk of Canadian whiskeys, which they're all a blend, but Canadians also make a good malt whiskey, which which is a little bit hard to come by in the st down in the States, especially in something like Utah, where you know your liquor diversity is a little bit more pinched off. And they also make a maple whiskey, which I had, and I would have loved to have been able to show you, but before I even thought of making this podcast, I used it to make pancakes. Seriously, I used the last of it to make pancakes. I took some of the, the maple whiskey, added it to the pancake batter, added it to the maple syrup, whisked it all up, made some pancakes, topped it with my uh, maple whiskey syrup, and it was delicious. Fantastic whiskey pancakes. And if I ever get my hands on another bottle of the whiskey, of the maple whiskey, we'll be sure to have a whiskey pancake episode. Maybe even have a whiskey pancake breakfast, and we'll film it. But uh, give Canadian whiskey a try, and next time we're going to do American whiskeys, and if things turn out, we'll also be doing very soon a distillery tour, and we're also going to start doing the tasting panels, and we're going to have some recipes and reviews, and so the format's going to be changing a little bit once we get past all the Intro 101 series. So American Whiskey is next time, and till episode 5, cheers.